Hello, all you folks out there in YouTube land. It's been a strange week, and internet issues have prevented me from downloading the game I had intended to review this week. Something about it being nearly 15 gigabytes on a connection that's up and down like a squirrel on methamphetamines. Unfortunately, that means I had to pull one of the games already to hand. The game I wound up with was on the PlayStation 3, Archibar's Trip. Some of the more rywits on the internet refer to it as Archibar Strip, and to be honest, I can see why. The game is an older style 3D brawler, with buttons to mash depending on where you want to hit your opponent. Just to be clear, when I refer to older style in this context, I refer specifically to the way buttons are mapped to an individual attack type. As combat systems go, it's clean and easy to work with, but not something you want to spend days on if you've issues with carpal tunnel syndrome. They also give you the option of changing the difficulty, and selecting the gender and name of your character. The difficulty thing is good for those whose fine motor control isn't quite up to scratch, or people that want to enjoy the story or game reviewers wanting to power through it so they can write reviews on short time space. Beyond that, it has an amusing combo system that if properly abused will allow you to end a combat quickly, which is particularly useful when dealing with large numbers of opponents. In terms of story, I'm not as easily amused as some, but while I found the plot a bit lacking, but the plethora of side characters absolutely made up for that shortcoming. In a rare showing for games of this type, the characters have a depth to them I hadn't expected. Each character has their own little quirks digging them all out is more amusing than it had a right to be. The humor is self-effacing, sometimes sarky, and even the English voice actors stood their ground. The protagonist is thin as blown glass, however, and for something like this, where you're encouraged to get to know and form relationships with the other characters, maybe that's not a bad thing. It is a commonly used motif in Japanese games, it's well reflected here. Same of the romantic side stories. Each choice you make has three options, varying from good, neutral, and total asshole. These choices have an effect what dialogue you receive immediately as well as flags down the line that can affect the way the story plays out. All the little details in the environment are here too, all the way down to the architecture or Akihabara. There is a pile of product placement, but it's very much part of the scenery one would expect of shopping districts anywhere in the world, let alone the dense commercial property in the city of Tokyo, and it all fits seamlessly. Back to the storyline and the combat system that it spawned, I said the plot was thin, and it is, but that plot is reflected in the combat system, where you play as an artificial vampire made good with the help of a mysterious girl in a somewhat superior situation to yours. They are badly allergic to sunlight, as is the wont of the vampire of legend, but not to the degree that they can't be up and about during the day. They just have to be covered up for the most part. While dressed, they're nigh invulnerable, one must mangle their clothing before stripping their clothing off. Once down to their unmentionables, the amount of skin exposure to the sunlight that they can take safely is exceeded, and they disintegrate. I've heard the feminists amongst us decry this, but frankly, I'm almost glad to see it. It keeps to the Japanese version of the vampire legend, and they don't just stand there and glitter like the creatures that some fantasy romance novelists seem to think they should. Yes, there are both male and female enemies, and on the off chance you manage to keep up the chain long enough to get their unders away from them, a tastefully placed white shiny bit obscures anything that might scandalize the more puritanical amongst us. As far as I'm concerned, it's not a huge problem, but others like to scream objectification at every perceived slight. The goal makes sense in context, and it's not like they're blowing chunks out of people. They even got in emails and a renamed version of Twitter on the cell phone menu, as well as a large encyclopedia to fill in, and a myriad of other otaku tools and trinkets. 
If I have a major criticism for the game, it's that the maps are tiny, and the district map provided is nearly useless without an indicator of which way you're currently facing. It makes traveling through a district on the way to another a bit painful if you don't know what you're about. After a while you get used to the layout of the various bits, and you wind up backtracking a lot less. In the early going it is a bit frustrating. I expect this was a technological limitation, as the textures are quite detailed, and Acquire was trying to prevent performance issues without sacrificing detail. The only thing I would request of this would be for the games in MOH Gra to have been playable, but one can't have everything. All in all, Akiba's trip is a fun little romp through the tulips if you have an appreciation for Japanese story-driven games. If you don't, then you might want to give this one a pass. I would recommend it, with that caveat. If you don't already have a like for the people or the culture, then you may not enjoy it much. The mechanics and the control schema are reasonably intuitive, and once mastered are reasonably unobtrusive. No stupid controller tricks, and quick time events are limited to the combat ending chains, along with some fairly ample time to hit the buttons. They are also predictable, and you're not too busy hunting all over the screen for a button press light to enjoy the show. For rating, I give Akibara's trip 8 of 10. I have just the one major gripe, and I didn't find any game-breaking bugs. You have a bit of grinding to do, but not beyond what I would expect. The story is thinnish, but everything else makes sense in context. The characters are enjoyable, and are reasonably well written and voiced. In the final estimation, it's a good game, but maybe not for everyone. It's several dozen hours on PlayStation Network for $40 US, and there is also a version for PlayStation Vita, which is nice. It would have been nicer as a cross-buy, but we can't have everything. Next week we have Point and Click Adventure The Book of Unwritten Tales, and the week after the game I had on schedule for this week, by a Shark Infinite. Strange as this is going to sound, I'm looking forward to both of these. This game was a lot of fun for me, and ultimately, isn't that what games are about? Right then, I'm off for now. It's time to go and replay it on gamer difficulty. Let's make games fun again.